morning. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, we remember Jesus is our Good Shepherd, that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven by which humanity is saved. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God. Uh, I have one announcement and one card to read. Uh, we will continue our Tuesday evening Bible study via Zoom. The fruit of the Spirit, joy. So if you have not received, actually you all did receive. I don't have, I emailed it, so I will email it again for anybody who did not receive it. And I have a, a card of thanks. Dear Grace family, thank you so very much for all the caring thoughts and healing prayers when times were overwhelming and I could not even pray for myself. I know others were lifting me up because I would receive grace from God to lift me up. I'm so grateful for each one of you. Karen R. So, she is still in Florida and will return in a couple of weeks. Let us turn in our bulletin to our responsive call to worship, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us join in our hymn of praise, number 359. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks. If you're able, let us stand. Raised him from the dead 
and caused him to be seen. We confess we want to love as Jesus loved us, but we hold on to grievances and wounds. Forgive us, Lord. We confess we want to serve others as Jesus served us, but so often we allow the values of the world to take priority in our lives. Forgive us, O oh God. We confess we want to give witness to the love of Jesus in our lives, but you know how frequently we fail. Forgive us, Lord. Fill us anew with your spirit, so that all we do and say may please you and affirm our identity as Christians. Hear us now as we lift our personal confessions in silence. People of God, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Rejoice, people of God. Through our faith in Christ's death and resurrection, we receive God's forgiveness for our sin. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, beginning at the fifth verse. The next day the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone the builders rejected, 
which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name in heaven given to men by which we must be saved. <clears throat> From John's first letter, the third chapter beginning at the 16th verse. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us love with words or tongue, not with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. <clears throat> and from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter beginning at the 11th verse. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of God's holy word. <clears throat> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What is salvation? In the Old Testament, salvation meant deliverance or redemption attended by spiritual blessings. Judges, Nazarites, and especially the kings had the task of delivering Israel, bringing salvation to Israel. In the Old and the New Testament, though God used people, salvation ultimately came from the hand of Almighty God. Remember how the people cried, Hosanna, which means save we pray, when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the people were looking for, crying out for God's salvation and expecting that salvation to come in Jesus. When Jesus hung on the cross, less than a week later, the scribes and chief priests mocked Jesus, saying, he saved others. He cannot 
save himself. In truth, Jesus chose not to save himself from the agony of the cross so that he could save us. In the New Testament, salvation is the essential characteristic of Jesus' mission and ministry and includes healing and deliverance from sin. The cadets in the United States Military Academy at West Point first began the practice of wearing class rings in 1835, a practice that has endured and spread to other colleges and high schools. However, you probably would never have ascribed the power of life and death and new life to this tradition. By all rules, Skinner was a dead man. With these words, Arthur Bressy began retelling the story of the day he found his best friend in a World War II Japanese prisoner of war camp. Best friends in high school, the two had grown up together in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. Arthur and Skinner had been inseparable. It made sense then that when one joined the army, the other would as well. They rode on the same troop ship to the Philippines, but were separated soon after their arrival. Skinner was on a rescue mission when Bataan fell to the Japanese in 1942. Arthur, Arthur Bressy was captured one month later. Through the prison grapevine, Arthur learned the whereabouts of his friend Skinner, who was near death in a nearby camp. Arthur volunteered for work detail in the hope that his company might pass through the other camp. One day, they did. Arthur requested and was granted five minutes to find and speak to his friend. He knew to go to the sixth side of the camp, which was itself divided into two sections one for those expected to recover, the other for those given no hope. Arthur found Skinner in zero ward among those expected to die. Arthur called out Skinner's name and out of the barracks walked the 79 pound shadow of the friend Arthur had once known. Arthur later recorded these impressions. I stood at the wire fence of the Japanese prisoner of war camp on Luzon, the largest and most populous island in the Philippines, and watched my childhood friend caked in filth, racked with pain and multiple diseases, tottered toward me. He was dead. Only his boisterous spirit hadn't left his body yet. I wanted to look away, but couldn't. His blue eyes, watery and dulled, locked on me and wouldn't let go. Malaria, dysentery, pellagra, scurvy, beriberi, Skinner's body was a dormitory for all those tropical diseases. He couldn't eat, he couldn't drink, he was nearly gone. Arthur didn't know what to do or say. His five minutes was nearly up. He began to finger the knot of the handkerchief tied around his neck. In it was his high school class ring. At the risk of punishment, he had smuggled the ring into camp, knowing the likelihood of catching some disease and the scarcity of treatment. He had been saving it to barter for medicine, for food, something to help him survive. But one look at Skinner, and he knew he could not save it any longer. As Arthur said goodbye, he slipped the ring through the fence to Skinner's frail hand and told him to wheel and deal with it. 
Skinner objected, but Arthur insisted. He turned and left, not knowing if he would ever see his friend alive again. Skinner took the ring and buried it in the barracks dirt floor. The next day, he took the biggest risk of his life. He approached the kindest of the guards and passed him the ring through the fence. The guard asked, is it valuable? Skinner assured, Skinner assured him that it was. The soldier smiled, slipped the ring into his pocket, and left. A couple of days later, he walked past Skinner and let a packet of medicine tablets drop to the ground. A day later, he returned with limes to combat the scurvy. Then came a new pair of pants and some canned beef. Within three weeks, Skinner was on his feet. Within three months, he was taken out of Zero Ward to the other side of the sick camp. In time, he was able to work. As far as Skinner knew, he was the only American ever to leave Zero Ward alive. The ring elevated his position in the camp. The ring secured his healing. The ring brought provisions. Arthur Bressy's class ring brought Skinner salvation, healing, and deliverance. How do we receive salvation? After healing the crippled man from birth, Peter and John proclaimed the name of Jesus as the source of God's salvation. Because they proclaimed the resurrection of the dead in Jesus, the religious leaders had Peter and John arrested and put in jail. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them about how they had healed the man crippled from birth. They asked, by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked, how was he healed? Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. We receive salvation by claiming, accepting, receiving the name of Jesus for our healing and deliverance. Peter, in saying, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, quoted Psalm 118 and identified Jesus as that capstone. The stone at the peak of an arch right at the tip, which holds and maintains the integrity of the arch. That saves the arch from collapse, from falling. Jesus, in fact, had identified himself as the capstone in the parable of the wicked tenants, which Jesus had told to the chief priests and elders of the people. In the parable, the landowner, who represents God, sent servants to claim his share of the vineyard's crop. But the tenants beat and killed the servants. The landowner sent other servants, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, the landowner sent his son. But the Tenants threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Jesus 
then asked the chief priests and elders what the landowner would do to these tenants. The religious leaders said, he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the share of the crop. Jesus responded, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone? Peter told the chief priests questioning him that the resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone that's at the base, the first stone laid in a building, the cornerstone of the Christian faith. Jesus whom they had crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, is the capstone they rejected. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to humanity by which we must be saved. Salvation, deliverance, and healing come to us in Jesus. In the movie, The Lion King, the hyenas are talking about King Lion, Mufasa, Mufasa. When one hyena says Mufasa's name, the other, other hyenas shiver. Oh, 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 say it again. And the other hyena responds, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Just as the King Lion's name, Mufasa, struck fear and excitement in the animals, who served the king, the lion king. The name of Jesus has power, the power to save those who serve him. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by to humanity by which we must be saved. That is the message of Easter. The name of Jesus has given power to Peter and John to heal the man crippled from birth. And the name of Jesus gives us power for deliverance and healing, power for our salvation today. What salvation, what deliverance or healing do you need, do I need, does someone you know or love, need. In the name of Jesus, you and I have the power of Almighty God available to us. Today, as in the first century, the name of Jesus holds the power for healing, for deliverance, the power for salvation. But we have to claim the name of Jesus, God's capstone, and receive the deliverance from evil, the healing from illness or disease, the salvation that God offers to us in Jesus. We can't refuse it, reject it, or reduce it in our minds. In the story about the two friends in the Japanese prisoner of war camp, Arthur's ring perfectly illustrates how we receive salvation. When Arthur offered Skinner his ring, Skinner at first refused the ring, the very ring that would ultimately save his life. He almost declined the life-giving gift his friend wanted to give him. Because he finally accepted the ring, Skinner leveraged it to secure provisions, privileges, and new life. Jesus is the ring of our salvation. We dare not reject him. The capstone we need to use every day to gain the salvation God offers to us. This is Easter. Let's remember Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to humanity by which we must be saved. Let's use 
the name God has given us. Jesus. 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 Amen. The psalmist said, God will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. As we continue in a spirit of worship, let us offer ourselves and our financial gifts to God. The usher will receive the morning offering. life within us, we present these tithes and gifts. May we use them to spread the good news of his great love and sacrifice. We offer you our lives in service, praying that the power that raised Jesus from the dead will enliven our spirits and renew our dedication to affirm the gospel in word and deed. We pray this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Please be seated. We will continue to pray for Christina G. She is uh, in the hospital and um, they, the doctors have advised that they not touch her because every time someone touches her it spikes and lowers her blood pressure and so we'll keep uh, keep Christina and Anna and Denny as parents uh, in our prayers. Let's turn to God in prayer. Great and good shepherd, source of all faithfulness, guide of all the people of our world, into a knowledge of the risen Christ that fills them with your goodness. Touch every world leader with the humility that the risen Jesus had, that they might lead their nations with your grace and mercy. Bring an end to hatred, an end to violence, and an end to our warring ways, that all people might live in peace. Heal the world of COVID-19. Great Good Shepherd, source of all faithfulness, guide all the people of this nation into a knowledge of the risen Christ that fills them with a longing for justice for all people. Touch every elected and appointed leader, especially President Biden, Vice President Harris, all 100 senators, 435 representatives, 50 governors, and every judge with your wisdom and grace your undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor, that they might offer grace to those on the opposite side of the issues we face in this nation. Bring a spirit of cooperation and collaboration instead of the spirit of division and the divisive rhetoric that separates and splits people into factions. Unite us to enable us to face the problems that affect our society. Protect the men and women serving this country here and overseas. Heal this nation of COVID-19 and facilitate the vaccination process. Great and good shepherd, source of all faithfulness, guide our neighbors near and far, those in need, into a knowledge of the risen Christ that fills them with your provision. Touch all those who struggle financially, socially, or emotionally, with your love. Belonging to the family of God, might they experience your provision 
for their need. Strengthen the downhearted, support the dispirited, sustain the discouraged, enable all who grapple with the basic needs of food, shelter, and emotional comfort or help, or seek counseling through public or private agencies designed to assist all those in need. Assist children and parents struggling with online learning and working from home. Great and good shepherd, source of all faithfulness, guide all the people of your church and Grace Church into a knowledge of the risen Christ that fills them with love and power and draws others to him. Touch everyone who proclaims the good news of Jesus' resurrection with your power and strength. Encourage them to persevere as they bring the good news to life in their lives. Protect all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ. Bless all who call Grace Church their spiritual home with renewed faith, hope, and love. Great Good Shepherd, source of all faithfulness, guide our extended family of faith into a knowledge of the risen Christ that fills them with peace and draws others to him. May our young couples, individuals, and family members remember Jesus is the stone the builders rejected which has become the capstone. May our couples know it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who was crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that God gives healing. May everyone here and those unable to be among us remember salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to humanity by which we must be saved. Joe. Thank you, Lord, that he and his wife have returned safely from their long journey south. Continue to bless them with memories of that journey. Gail, Joanne, Gary, Dave, Matt, Gary N, Sandy J, Muriel, Babs, Louise, Chris F, Chris M, Ellie, Betsy, Emma, Jean, Marion, Cliff, Julius, Caroline, Tina, Anthony, and Christina. Lord, surround her right now with your angels, your healing touch. We cannot touch her, but you can, Lord, at the depths of her being. Lay your healing hand upon her. In the name of Jesus, we claim it. May those we care about who are struggling or just trying to move forward, not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Luella's family, DJ, Megan, granddaughter, Caitlin, Jeff's friend, Mark's father, Peter, Joanne's friend, Judy, and nephew, Michael, her husband and her husband, nephew Michael, Karen's friends, Faith and Dale, Dale's daughter Jenna, Karen Kay's father Maurice in England, daughter Kate and son James, and Christy and grandson Henry, Muriel's friend Eileen, grandchildren Katie and Ryan, daughter Jill and son Bob, wife Kim, Karen's sons Joel, Scott, and Joanne's daughter, Andrea, fiance Adam, Thomas and Christy, grandchildren Lucas and Oliver and Eve, nephew Sean and sister Diane, our missionaries Adam and Janelle, who are preparing to return to the United States, and their sons Jonathan and Thomas. May those we love facing life-threatening illnesses or grieving the loss of loved ones remember this is how they know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for them, that they might live. Muriel's brother-in-law, the family of Bill H., who passed away, Karen's cousin, Jerry, Anna's friends, Yvonne, Judy,
Kristen and Donna, Donna's five-year-old son, Zach, all facing cancer. Bless Anna and Denny as they visit Christina and try to manage their love and their fear. The Nelson, Jensen, Holt, and Swanson families on Pam's passing. Luella's friend, Roberta, whose husband passed away. Cheryl on her friend, Denise's passing. Chris F. and family on his grandfather's passing. Dave, Roger, and all the family on Marge's passing. The Simpson family on Reverend Paul Simpson's passing. Hear us now as we lift the silent prayers we hold in our hearts to your throne of grace. Response number 360, Jesus Christ is risen today. If you're able, let us stand.
Oh, thanks.